very pleased with him. He had a, a difficult flight down. Uh, the last couple of hours, you know, took their toll, but that was a month ago. And uh, he's pretty good shape now. He looks good, his coat is good. He's striding out really well on the track and uh, we're very happy with him. You had a bit of a hiccup on Saturday morning with the jock coming off. Has he got through that going an extra couple of laps? Yeah, look, it was just a freak thing. I think he just clipped a cone out on the track and he just kind of spun around a bit and on the strength of a horse going one direction and the rider gets sent the other, but he's absolutely perfect. Okay. perfect. Just at the moment as we stand here, you're debating whether you go to Flemington or not. What will be the clincher there? Uh, the ground in Flemington in the morning. Um, I know they're going to water again tonight, but the forecast for the next few days is pretty dry to get up to about 30 degrees, I think. And it's, you know, the track here, Werribee, is, is set up to suit the Europeans, and I think it would be, you know, it probably makes more sense to stay here and, and, and do what we have to do here. Uh, we used to say, think that it was hard for a staying horse to get prepared for a two-mile race off, having not raced since early August. We now know that it can be done. Uh, Dermot has to weave his magic again, though, with this horse, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Um, you know, there's, there's two schools of thought. You know, a lot of the European horses here this year have run, and some of them have won, some of them extremely successfully, and the one the others have, have run a little bit in and out. But uh, we're a long way from home. We're under no illusions about that, and we just have to treat every horse as an individual case. And, um, you know, this guy, he came down here a fit horse, we had most of our homework done before we came down. You know, we pretty much know now what we need to do before we come and when we're here. And um, everything is running smoothly, thank God. Is he an, an adaptable horse that will cope with the pressures of uh, racing a bit tighter than what we see over in your country? Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem to him. It will be the biggest field he's ever raced in. There's no question about that. Uh, the draw, as we all know, is very, very key. Um, but he's a horse, he's an extremely adaptable horse. He's, he's arguably the fastest European horse in the race because he's won at a high level over 2,000 metres, a European mile and a quarter on a fast track. And he's also, uh, as a jumper, you know, gone two miles and, and further. Um, so he's, he's a very adaptable horse and he's a strong horse. And uh, Pat Smullen rides him with great confidence. Just talking of the jockey, obviously he doesn't get here till next Monday. Yeah. Is, is that hard just with the preparing Galileo's choice? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, you, I, ideally you'd like, I suppose, if the jockey could have been here a day or two earlier, but the Breeders' Cup is arguably, outside of Australia, the biggest meeting in the world. That takes place in California on over two days, Friday and Saturday. We've runners there. And Dad and Pat head off there uh, tomorrow and uh, fly on then, uh, I think, on late Saturday night to get in here on Monday. We've watched him really step up his work uh, consistently. He goes out there and a couple of bit stronger gallops. Has that always been the plan? Yeah, just a slow, gradual build-up. Uh, just get the momentum going, get his stride going. You know, once he's mentally happy, um, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. Right.